What's going on guys and welcome back to the crack of pack series today for the very first time I believe on this series we're opening up a pack of ultimate masters obviously a very new set but a very high powered set hopefully we get something awesome out of this one uh, I think most of the I mean the mythic slot is insane the rare slot honestly is also very very good so we've got a pretty high chance of getting something awesome here uh, we of course are going to look at this from a draft perspective we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one pick one would be if we were drafting this set uh, I didn't actually, I practice draft this set a lot. I didn't actually get the chance to play with this set. So first hand uh, playability, didn't get much of that, but I watched a number of drafts on this and it's a really, really fun set. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to give you guys at least somewhat of a uh, viable choice here. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the, the rare is right there. So, okay, we are gonna start, let's actually start here. Uh, not that it super matters, but we start with Hyena Umbra. So this is an enchant creature for one white. The enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has first strike. It also gains totem armor. So if it would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. This is a really interesting mechanic because it prevents a lot of like just straight up kill spells. Instead, uh, the, the aura actually gets destroyed. So your creature will stick behind it. Basically two for one is the card no matter what. I really like stuff like that. There is a very, very powerful aura deck uh, that I do like quite a bit. I don't like first picking the auras. I'd rather have like the hexproof, like slippery bogle, kind of th those style cards. Uh, but this is definitely a card for that deck without a doubt. Uh, Skywing Aven is a 2-1 for 2 and a blue. It has flying and you can discard a card and return it to its owner's hand. Uh, that's not uh, a downside uh, as some people might think. There are actually really powerful things you can do by discarding cards. And being able to bounce a creature back also is just definitely helpful. A 2-1 flyer for 3 is pretty good value. It's not amazing, but hopefully it's going to get in for at least one or two swings. Uh, if it does, then it's more than worth it. On top of that, also, it kind of has built-in protection being able to discard that card. So, target it with a removal spell from the opponent. Instead, you discard a card that may or may not be beneficial for you to discard, and then instead, this returns to your hand. So, I do kind of like a card like this. I don't think it's first pickable, but it's definitely good. Uh, and speaking of cards that are good with this card, Fiery Temper uh, is an instant for one and two red. It deals three damage to any target but it also has a madness cost of one red. So if you discard this card, uh, instead you can discard it into exile. And when you do, if you cast the ma the madness cost, if you paid that cost, you actually get the effect for only one red. So in this case, that's a huge, huge step down in terms of efficiency, that's great. Uh, and so I like stuff like this. This is obviously just a really good removal spell anyway, uh, especially for a format like this, you want as much removal as possible when there's a lot of high value creatures. Uh, and so I like this card quite a bit. Uh, so far, it's definitely going to be the pick. That being said, obviously, we're only into the commons. So uh, Walker of the Grove is a 7-7 for 6 and 2 green. Uh, when, it, it, when it leaves the battlefield, create a 4-4 green elemental creature token. You can also evoke it for 4 in a green. So instead of paying the full 8 mana, you can pay 5. And when you cast this for its evoke cost, if you do, it's sacrificed as soon as it enters the battlefield. So essentially what this is, is either an 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven, that when it dies uh, will leave behind a 4-4, four, four, or it's a 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. Uh, just to clarify, that's kind of how this card works. It's fine. It's not amazing in a ramp deck. It's probably a decent top end. Uh, getting some 2 for 1 value is always good, so if you can play it for the 8, I feel like it's definitely worth it. Playing for five a four four is like not really what you want to be doing. I don't think uh, it's fine in a tight spot. It's definitely fine, uh, and so I wouldn't mind playing this in some green decks. But ideally, I'd like a little more value out of a card. Uh, Slum Reaper, a four two for three and a black. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. So this is basically a kill spell uh, on a stick. Uh, and you can just sacrifice this just to clarify so when this comes into the into into play when it enters the battlefield so to speak uh, You can sacrifice it and then your opponent also has to sacrifice a creature You can also sacrifice any other creature So if you just have tokens lying around or something like that You're more than welcome to sacrifice those instead and then leave behind the 4-2. It's okay I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, I think there are matchups where you want it for sure uh, especially something like a Hexproof uh, Aura deck, you want something like this because you can't target 
the creature itself. You have to let the opponent sacrifice it. Uh, and so if you're against like an all-in strategy where they are playing sort of a hexproof slippery bogle deck, uh, which is in this set by the way, uh, then this is definitely the card that you want against it. And it's not bad just in general, uh, but it's just not amazing. I would more be interested in sideboarding this to be honest. Uh, that being said, if I was short on playables, this is ob obviously perfectly fine in that situation as well. Uh, Hooting Mandrels is a 4-4 four, four for 5 and a green with Trample. That seems like bad value, but it does have Delve. So uh, each card you exile from your graveyard while, while casting this spell pays for one of its mana costs. That can only be the generic mana, it cannot be the green mana, but you can essentially play this for one green and it be a 4-4 four, four Trampler for one green. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I actually really, really like this card. This is definitely a playable, very strong playable card in the limited environment for this set. Uh, from what I have seen. Uh, that being said, I don't know that it's first pickable. It's very good, uh, and I would keep it up here with Fiery Temple, Temper, excuse me, for now, uh, but it's not gonna be like the most powerful thing you can do, obviously. Uh, Twins of Morair Estate, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 3-5 for four and a black, and it has a madness cost of two and a black. So this is just basically a madness card. That's all that you want this for. Uh, playing this for five as a 3-5, not great. Playing it as a 3-5 for three is insane. Uh, very, very good value. If you have the enablers, this is a good card. If you don't have the enablers, it is not good. So uh, I don't like first picking this card. If I'm in the madness deck, I'm okay with running it. Uh, that's kind of how I would phrase that. Uh, Repel the Darkness, an instant for two and a white. Tap up to two target creatures and then draw a card. I don't really like stuff like this. I It's okay. It's playable because it lets you draw a card, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, if it only taps two target creatures, it would be really bad. Because it replaces itself, it's a little better, but it's still not great. I would not first pick this by any means. There's no way in the world. Uh, Raid Bombardment is an enchantment for two and a red. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less attacks uh, deals one damage to, eat to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. So this is basically a win more kind of card. I don't really like this one. I don't know if it's good. I didn't really see it played all that well. Uh, I did see a few decks where people were trying to kind of make this work and it just didn't really seem to get there. So I'm not a fan of this card. It would definitely not be a first pick for me. Demir Guild Mage is a 2-2 for hybrid mana, either blue or black. Uh, you can pay three and a blue and target player draws a card. Activate this only at the time that you could play a sorcery. Uh, you could also pay three and a black and target player discards a card. And again, you can only do that as a sorcery as well. Uh, I actually really like this. I think this is a really good card. Um, so being able to not only draw cards on your end, but also potentially discard cards on the opponent's end is huge. It's also just a 2-2 two -two for two. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to cast, but in a blue black deck, not really because it doesn't really matter what lands you have. Uh, if you're splashing a third color, it gets a little bit more tricky, but I really like this card. I'm going to keep this over here. I think I would pick this over the Hooting Mandrels. I'm not sure about the Fiery Temper, though, to be honest. Fiery Temper is just such good removal in this set, so uh, I'm kind of on that one. Uh, okay, so we're going to mix things up a little bit. Spirit Token is there. We have our Foil, which is a Rune Snag. It's an instant for one and a blue. Uh, counter Target Spell, unless its controller pays two plus an additional two for each card named Rune Snag in your graveyard. I think this is just okay. It's not amazing. If you can get a couple of them, it's probably a little bit better, obviously, but uh, it's still just like a little bit worse mana leak most of the time uh, because a lot of the time you're not always going to have a lot of copies of these. And even if you did, I don't think you'd want to run tons of them. So like, eh, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Our rare is Visions from Beyond, uh, of Beyond, excuse me. Uh, unfortunately not the best. It's an instant for one blue. Draw a card. If your graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, you draw three cards instead. So theoretically this can be Ancestral Recall, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if I believe, yes. Yes, I hope I said that correctly. Okay, so um, <laughs> basically this is a one mana draw spell, uh, which is great in terms of efficiency. It's not great in terms of limited because it doesn't really do anything. If you can draw three cards with it, it's awesome. But in limited, that's not necessarily going to be the case. Yeah, you might get 20 cards in your graveyard, but you're going to have to hold on to this card for a while to get there. So not really a good card, not the one that I would be interested in. 
We have Malevolent Whispers, which is a sorcery for three and a red. Gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Untap it. It gets plus two, plus zero, and gains haste until the end of the turn. It also has a madness cost of three and a red. Uh, this is a pretty good madness card, honestly. I like stuff like this, especially in like a sacrifice outlet deck, which there are a few uh, that you can really, really just go off with a card like this. It's really sweet. Uh, I don't necessarily like first picking it, to be honest. Uh, I think it's powerful, but it's not quite powerful enough. Uh, Mohopmi... Uh, Jin. It's the Jin. Uh, it's a 5-6 flyer for 6, which is just okay. It's fine. Uh, yes, it's flying. Yes, it's a 5-6. Yes, it's only 6 mana, so it's technically pretty good in terms of value, but... It is just a 5-6 flyer, so it's going to be easy to deal with. That being said, uh, if you can get in even just one or two attacks with this, you're probably likely to win the game. So it's definitely powerful. It's in a blue deck, in a blue-white flyers deck. Perfectly fine. I would definitely run it. But I don't like first picking it, if I'm going to be honest. It just doesn't feel like it does enough for me. Uh, I That might be asking for too much because it is such a very efficient card, but... It is just a 5-6 flyer, so uh, not a huge fan. Uh, Plume Veil is a 4-4 uh, Flash Defender flyer, uh, and it, you can pay it either white or blue, three of each uh, hybrid mana. Uh, for this card, it, this is just, it's a wall. It's good. I mean, there are definitely instances where you want it. Uh, I don't really like it, to be honest, but I did see it work a few times for a lot of people, so maybe I'm wrong on that. I'm not a huge fan though. Uh, honestly, I'm gonna throw the gin in here just because we did not get the best pack, if I'm gonna be honest. So, uh, I feel like the safe pick is just Fiery Temper, which is probably what I would take. Uh, I think just being able to get some solid removal is always kind of priority, uh, a high priority for me. And so that's definitely the card I would pick. There are a couple other options here. I think the Djinn is a good one. I also do think the Guild Mage is quite good too. So let me know in the comment section if you disagree. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. As always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.